Hello everyone, my name is Gus. Hi, I'm Woody. Today we have an interesting topic. This this was submitted by, by one of our subscribers and is from another scuba channel where they were talking about the need, maybe not the need, but the reason why you should teach people how to scuba on your knees. What? Yeah. So they, they just brought this up and they were talking that about you, it. Wait, like, wait, wait. Are you serious? You should. Yes. You're not joking with me. I that you should teach people to scuba on their knees is the topic we're discussing. Right. And they're talking about they're, they're, they're talking about why they do it and why you know why it makes sense. And I just want to get your thoughts on, or our thoughts on that because I think we're passionate about this one. And this is dive talk. Let's talk about diving. So I I like it. Let Let's I, just start I, it. I, okay. Let's start I, it and see. I have a lot to say and and, yeah. I, and I'm not going to be like I'm against <laughs> these guys but right. my overall start is I can't think of one 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 why. All right, well let's watch. Okay. Let's see. All right. My name is Kenny Dial and I want to welcome you to season 3 of the Scuba Diving Podcast. Shout out to Kenny for talking about this topic, by the way. Some instructors out there believe strongly in you should train your open water students from a neutral position first, even your skills, such as math. Okay, hold on. Wait. Because this is... is... <laughs> All right, hold on one second. One second. This is going to be a hard hold one for one me. second. I can't even look at this. What are they doing? <laughs> they look like... Well, you know, when you see the pod of whales that are sleeping... And they're all <laughs> just like vertical Gosh. sleeping. All right. So this is, they're calling We're never going to get through this. They're calling this the neutral position just because they're not on the floor. No. Right. Just, <laughs> I said, no. I, I'm trying. I'm trying. All right. So they're calling this the neutral position just because they're not on the, so for them, it's like some people say you should teach them in neutral position like this. No, this is not at all what a neutral position should be for the sake of of you guys out there okay i'm gonna let this play for a minute because the problem is i have so much to say you're gonna be mad at me and let the video play yes. that's what they're gonna do with me but i can't I, it's bad I, be what? mad at me all of you be mad at me because I i'm gotta sorry stop it. i gotta come yeah, on this I mean, is a no, joke i don't even know what they're doing it's <laughs> All right, go ahead. Just clearing regularly to remove all the all the basics should be done. Look at these start with a hat. You should never do it on their knees. And their argument for that is that it's the law of primacy, which of course does weigh heavily on scuba diving, the law of primacy. But they're saying if you learn on your knees, then you never learn buoyancy. Right. And so a lot of people are saying, oh, it's lazy to teach people on their knees, get them off their knees. Yes. Therein sparks the argument. It, right. It's this, it, okay. listen. I think it's actually easier yeah to teach students to not be on their knees so for starters and i'm gonna get killed for this one the gear is not made it's difficult to remove and do and use scuba gear in a vertical position on your knees it's hard second you're never going to do that when you dive i hope and third this is my big one that i mm. okay this is my biggest one do you remember that we used to do a lot of what's called tri scubas with people that have never, ever breathed underwater before? That's right. Now, in all the tri scubas I've done, the lesson part of it is maybe three minutes. Five minutes would be a long one. If okay. you take a full five minutes, that's a big... You're wasting... That's a lot, a lot of, of... Right? Yeah. And what happens for those of you that don't know about diving is we are basically getting people that have never breathed underwater into scuba gear and allowing them to try scuba diving in the pool. In the shallow. And yeah. in the shallow end of the pool, yeah. even more to my point. Now... Within, if you weight them properly, because they don't know how to do a weight check, if you weight them properly and you leave them alone and you basically just teach them a few basic things, one of which is don't mess with the low pressure inflator hose. Right. Just don't touch it because I weighted you properly. And your entire neutral buoyancy lesson is when you're under there swimming around naturally, just feel how your breath affects where you are in the water column. 
within 10 minutes max. Right. Brand new, never before, no lesson. Try scuba people mm-hmm. are swimming in the shallow end, which is like four feet right in the middle of the water column, neutral. And they never knew anything different. Now, if it's okay and they're able to do it and it's safe for them, why is it not safe for every single person that takes scuba? You're telling me that the person that goes through three-hour classroom session and proper digital learning, it's safer for them to be on their knees, but it's not for the try scuba student. Who basically then I add skills in my tri scuba, believe it or not. Right. I like you guys come up for a second. Do you want to try something? I ask them. They're like, sure. I, have, I said, okay. I'm going to go underwater, neutral, and I'm going to clear. I'm going to. I'm going to basically show you how to, you know, remove the water from your mask. Right. They're all neutral, removing their mask, completely neutral. Yeah. There is no reason to do it on your knees. Okay, but let's tackle a couple of the things that they mentioned. Number one is they say that the instructors out there, like us, who push people to learn how to dive on a neutral... In the diving position. In in the right trim, right? In the scuba diving position. We do it because of the law of primacy, which means that if you learn in that way, you will then continue to dive that way, which means also that if you learn in your knees, you will continue to do everything in your knees. Nobody that I know says that you should learn how to scuba in the right trim and buoyancy because of the law of primacy. I've never heard that. Ever. Ever. Never. Because I... I'm a product of learning on my knees and eventually learning not to be on my knees. By the way, I was not so as initial instructor. It's 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 totally possible. Most people that learn how to scuba dive, especially the longer in the past you go, learn on their knees, right? And most people can change that. So nobody's saying that you do it because if you learn in your knees, you will forever be in your knees. Nobody says that, okay? So that's that's just, that makes no sense. The second thing that he addresses is that, we, that he says that the people that say that instructors are teaching their niece is because they're lazy. I've also never said that. I'm not saying that you're lazy. What I'm saying is most instructors that teach on their knees don't know how to properly have trim and buoyancy. They just don't do it right. They, yeah. For them, for them, and this is just yeah. me. Yeah. This is not your opinion, so I don't want people to bash you. Especially instructors watching this are going to be like, whoa, the dive talk guys. No, no, not the dive talk guy. Gus, me. I'm saying that. I'm saying you don't know how to do it, okay? Because you're not putting the practice in to do it. And you're not doing it in the right trim and buoyancy position. For you watching this instructor that teaches this way, for you, neutral buoyancy means doing the Buddha position during your perfect buoyancy class, which is completely worthless and useless. You will never use the Buddha position that you're trying to impress your students with in a real dive. It's not a good skill to have. Don't teach anyone that skills. It's a waste of time. Okay, you need to be in proper trim and buoyancy. And the reason why you're teaching people on your knees is because you cannot do it. All right, you struggle with it. And what you need to do is practice. None of us are gods of scuba. None of us are like the best in the world. We learn trim and buoyancy from others. And then you perfect it by training, by practicing, going out diving. The further back I go in my videos, the worse I look. That's the idea is that you improve over time. But what happens is, is the instructors get lazy. They don't practice. They just continue to look like whales that are sleeping or seahorses. And they teach all the other seahorses behind them. And then they say that we call them lazy. Oh, you're just being lazy. No, no. I'm not telling you you're being lazy. I'm telling you, you just don't know how to do it. So you can't teach others how to do it either. That's my point. Of view. Yes. I, it, it It's really well said. I'm not sure they, I, you know, most... Most instructors, I think, do know how to do it. What I what what I think happens though is, let's say instructors that you have a struggling student, right? That's usually what I hear. I need to put them on my knees because they're just totally struggling. They're not going to remove their rag. They're not going to move their mass. They're just immediately going up. I would then say to you what I do with that person that's struggling, and it's okay to struggle. Slow down, give them more time just to swim around, and you can even 
allow them to be in the neutral trim position. Maybe their fin tips are coming up and down. So at the beginning, you it's okay to practice. Just put your fin tips on the ground and just feel your breath lift you mm -hmm. and blow out and feel it going down. In other words, when you rush them, because you're not letting them just enjoy being neutral naturally, you're just trying to pound skills on them. They're going to get nervous and it's going to mess up their trim and buoyancy. It's slow it down. There's no clock. Like they don't have to get this in five minutes. Right. So you don't have to just, oh man, they didn't clear their mask right away. Plant them on their knees because that's lazy. You see, that's an instructor that's focused more on themselves as the instructor rather than their student. I would rather not teach. Honestly, if I feel like I don't have the time to put everything I have into a class, I would just rather not teach. Just dive. And I don't do that right now. I don't have the time to properly teach tech diving and rebreather diving. It's hard. It's hard for me. I'm I'm I I'm always struggling with my trim and buoyancy on a rebreather. I have to when I haven't done it in a while, I just have to practice. And the first couple of dives, you know, I'm, I'm adjusting and tweaking. I don't look that good. It's not easy for me. Yeah. Then managing a line or whatever, you know, it's hard. So don't do it. If yeah. you feel rushed and you feel the need to have to shortcut it, do your students a favor and just don't teach. Yeah, put Honestly. in the time. Okay, so the first two things they said, which is we just say that it's because they're lazy and we just say that it's because of the law of primacy. We already established that's a myth. Nobody really says that that's the reason why you're teaching your knees. Again, let's keep going because they are going to explain why they And we warned, it. we warned we were going to stop big at the beginning. So we'll, we'll right. let it play some now. Let's do it. This is simple. This is not difficult for me. I coach, I teach, my kids are doing um, math right now. We didn't start with calculus, started with addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. Then you I go could to stop it again, algebra, I'm not, I'm then you not go gonna. to trigonometry time. In anything, like when I'm teaching my football players, I teach them, you know, for instance, defensive backs. I teach them to go for the near hip, but we're not having them hit the <sighs> offensive players on the first time they're doing it because they're not gonna remember, oh wait, I gotta do the near hip thing. It's the same thing with, let's say, mass removal. If we're having them focus on their buoyancy first, then they're gonna forget to do all the stuff they need to do with their mask now i don't have a problem understand with people teaching like that if that's what works for them i am no, perfectly I, I don't fine think with there's that. nothing wrong with doing that. right but there's to say that the law of primacy is oh they're going to be on their knees the whole time no every class i have we start like that that looks good the class nobody that looks on good knees. everybody's got good buoyancy not perfect buoyancy but they've got good buoyancy well i think that's where it's rooted right so and we've we see this at the aquarium all the time we yeah. see that there is a problem teaching buoyancy yes the fact that there was a peak buoyancy class created is a testament to that's bad a, training yes that shouldn't exist if that exists then the the training isn't being done right now now i've had a lot of people come and say that was the best thing ever for me yeah, but you shouldn't need it correct the, but they need it because they have instructors like you guys well, i mean they need it because they're learning on their knees well but the, well, how, well, you can't, well, you can't, but you can criticize that there's a peak performance buoyancy class or the perfect buoyancy class from SSI and it shouldn't exist because, you know, instructions should be good enough so you have that level of buoyancy after your open water. Oh, but yeah, let me tell you why I teach on their knees. Yes. They're what, listen, opposite. The, the perfect buoyancy class is because. Why not get an opportunity to even get your trim and buoyancy better? Even if you were in your open water class doing pretty well with neutral trim and buoyancy, why not get an opportunity to improve it even more with additional techniques? Now, one of the techniques that I can see is not being done in this video. It is almost impossible to sit there and stay on your knees if you were weighted properly in four feet of water. Every time you inhale, those knees are coming up. Mm -hmm. If you're yep. weighted properly, you can't stay on your knees. I'm going to challenge you. Now, that I said, if you're weighted properly. And I promise you, weighting properly means you don't need as much weight as you think. Mm -hmm. I bet you. Most people are shedding weight. I just did it. In a raid class, I was privileged to co-teach at the instructor level. One of the instructors dropped their weight by 10 pounds in the session. An instructor 
10 Amazing. pounds he was overweighted by and he was like i feel so much better of and course. he was able to sit there in the water column and not move his feet or legs at all anymore yeah i see it so at the they're aquarium overweighting too. themselves yes. it's that don't overweight them so that they can be planted on the ground because then it is very hard to have neutral buoyancy and this is why because then what you have to do is you have to use the buoyancy compensator more than it was meant to be used for. The buoyancy compensator is meant to add a tiny little bit of adjustment as you basically break down through the various atmospheres because you're 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 getting more dense. Everything's getting more dense and dense adds weight, right? So you're your bodies, your tissues, your wetsuit, your BC is squeezing, you're more dense. You may need a little adjustment. And the, when I say adjustment, if you're weighted properly, it's like this. Like, it's a little if you're weighted properly. And you're in a wetsuit. You may not need anything if you have a dry suit. But if you're overweighted, then you're going to need to add a lot of air into that BC. Mm -hmm. And when you add a lot of air into that BC, every little movement that you make is exaggerated with how much you have to dump out of it and add back into it. Does that make sense? Right. So if there's a lot of extra air in that BC to keep you neutral, if, as long as you don't move, that's okay. But have you ever dove in a cave or the ocean where you don't have to move up and down? Right. And I know, I watch you. When you have to move up and down and we're diving, you don't even touch it. No. You just increase the volume a little bit of your inhale and a little less on the exhale. And it's like... Without coming out of trim. That's right. It's so much easier is my point. It's easier. Yes. It's less. Don't yeah. overweight them. So what I would rather this video say is honesty. I have to overweight my students because I feel like it's easier for them because I don't want them to jump to calculus. It's not calculus to be neutral and in trim. Yeah. It's, e it's easier. It's you're, you're making it miserable for them because they can't figure out why they're a yo-yo. Yeah. You know what the biggest pressure change is? A swimming pool, the frigging swimming pool in the first four or five feet, every inch you move is a big exaggeration and pressure right. change. The shallower you're you making it harder i want to do the opposite and make it easier for my students it's not easier to overweight them and put them on their knees that's i had to get that out yeah it's just it's wrong they're and not again, right i, I want to get ahead of the comments because i know that some people will make and and they will be right about this they will make the the comments that you do have to start a little bit overweighted at the beginning of the dive because the tank, as you know, an aluminum 80 tank goes from being negative two pounds or so to positive four. So you do have to start with more weights. At the beginning of the dive, you'll be heavy. You'll be using more air than towards the end of the dive where your tank is lighter. But a, a little still, bit. You know, it's, it's not it's 20 little, pounds. Right. It's a it, it, right. That equivalency, and I'd have to look at it yeah. between the negative buoyancy of an aluminum 80 full versus empty. I'd have to look at that. I don't, I mean, yeah. I, you people can criticize me. You should know that. I don't, I don't know. I don't remember. I don't know thing. the exact. It's like part. a pound or two. No, no, it's, it's more than that. in the aluminum is 80. It? Yeah. It's, it's it? more than, I actually have it written down because Let, I, let's look at that because yeah. I don't think it's as much as people. What I'm trying to say is it's definitely not the five or 10 or the 10 pounds they're overweighting people yeah so from minus 1.6 to 2.8 positive okay so from negative 1.6 pounds to positive 2.8 so it's 1.6 minus negative 1.6 so it's, it's 1.6 plus 2.8 yes so it's about four pounds difference right four okay. pounds okay four pounds difference but I'll it's not 20 you, pounds. I, I mean, okay, if you want to overweight at the beginning by four pounds too much, which I think is even too much, I think you can overcome that with a perfect buoyancy yeah. class where you're able to then learn the volume of breathing to over to help compensate for that change yeah. more than just the weight and, and overusing the low pressure inflators. Well, what, what, I, what I'm trying to say is I, I don't want people to feel like we're telling them you should never use weights. Like the weight of your tank is enough because 
towards the end of a dive, the yeah. tank will actually be pulling you up. Mm -hmm. So you you may need weights, okay? Mm -hmm. Depending on the tank too. If you're using steel tanks, they stay negative the whole dive. So you may not need it. So anyway, let's let's that's keep it. going here. Good problem discussion. is there is a need. Right. And yeah, so I don't issue. have a problem with the class. I actually think it's great for a lot of people. Right. But it should never have existed in the right. first place. You sh there shouldn't be a need for the class. The need is created by very short classes, overworked, <laughs> underpaid instructors. Yeah. Yep. Big time. They teach finally, like that. finally, people are so focused on all the skills and the academics they're trying to front load in the beginning, yeah. they don't work on buoyancy. Right. As much as they should, the student shouldn't need a peak buoyancy. That's I do part of open agree. water training. Work on yeah, that. you're sure. supposed to be. Sure. You're supposed but to be signed off on that. Right, and clearly that's not happening. That looks we great. See it every night. Really yeah. good. But I think yeah. that's what's prompting these people to say, "I'm going to teach them I neutral." And it's a fair thing. And I do believe there's value. It's coming from a good place initially, yeah. until they start saying other instructors it, are lazy and so on. Here, here's where I think it, well, there is some validity to it. With my kids, none of my kids had training wheels on their bike. Right, I was talking to a bike shop and they said look nice we can get you training wheels but honestly if you put training wheels on you've got to unlearn some stuff and so there is something to that however that being said you don't have to unlearn being on the bottom there's been plenty of times when i've been diving and i've had to be on the bottom going after a lobster or helping someone out with something or getting a shell inevitably you're going to be on the bottom right. for something and yeah. so it's not it's not a skill you're you, you have to unlearn in order Why? to do buoyancy Why? they're both skills Listen, <laughs> I know I'm going to get beat up by them, right? You know, if you're going for a lobster or a search and rescue salvage or any of those dives you and I just did, those are very task oriented where you're dealing with things on the bottom. Right. Were we ever on the bottom to do it? No. Put your head down a little bit more. Your feet can be up. In fact, if you are on the bottom trying to do those things, inevitably you're damaging the, vi in the environment and you're probably going to silt it out. I don't see, I don't agree with that statement that you inevitably need to be on the bottom to do certain things like hunt a, lo uh, uh, a lobster. I don't, I don't believe in that. No. Don't be on the bottom in the ocean ever, ever, because I can tell you you're damaging that dirt can have life in it i mean i don't see and, and any justification for that well and sometimes you do have to get you know all the way to the bottom like if we're looking for lionfish or whatever you're in the crack but you know i do i do what ed taught me ed said you're either going to be perfect trim or you're going to be inverted yeah. just be inverted That's and it. stick your head all, all over the place you don't have to lay on the bottom you don't have to totally skill being on the bottom but it's not something you have to unlearn like training wheels training wheels you literally have to unlearn trim. because you, you don't learn to to balance and instead you this is this it's is the instructor right like we're, lo we're looking look at the tra tra training wheels but it, that's not the same thing as it's right. just hard no, man. Can, look okay, at okay. listen i got i gotta stop it let, let me i'm sorry i don't care this one i'll take the beating up yeah, join me up. what he just <laughs> said was wrong okay listen Stop saying that we're saying that you have to un. It's not because you have to unlearn it to be on the bottom. What you're doing by being on the bottom is saying that it's okay to be on the bottom. And that is wrong. It's not okay to be on the bottom of our oceans. It's not. I'm not ever going to agree with that. I've seen, I'm old man, so much damage to our reefs because of this. And you don't have to be on the bottom to do any of the things that you just said. Forget about unlearning it. It's a signal of, oh, my instructor's planted on the bottom, so I'll be on the bottom. Be okay. And then it continues because maybe it feels easier, relaxing, and it is a form of being lazier. You know, well, I course. mean, once you get used to being, though, in, in neutral trim and, and being, and it's not easy. I just went through this to be able to be perfectly still with your feet not moving at all. When you get that balance perfect, it feels, it's like, if, oh, it's like, oh my God, I don't have to do one single thing and I can just sit there. And that's hard to Gus's earlier point. Like you're going to practice and you got to adjust some things. And um, it's just not right what he's saying. So I can't, 
I can't agree because you, right. some guy that's an instructor, it's not that I'm being a jerk or Gus is, it's just not right. It's you're not right in your right. statements here this time. A little too strong of the letter of the law, so right. to speak. Yeah. It's taking a little too literally, like like no one goes and says, hey, I know we're doing a drift dive on the uh, wall, the Santa Rosa wall in Cosimo on the bottom thousand feet down. Right. But I, I need to um, clear my mask, so I need to find a bottom to get Right, yeah, nobody nobody's does that. Nobody's saying that. No, nobody's saying that. Um, yeah, and so it, I understand their frustration. We deal right. with it regularly. I get the frustration. But the ones that can do that, typically they've set it up that way from the beginning, and right. it's, it's a luxury to be able to do that. Right. You because need a lot every, more time. Not every student is going to... There are certain students who just take sure, it like a fish in sure. water. Other students need more time and they need to work on the individual skills and put them together. They're so focused here, That's you have fine. to eliminate all the other distractions. That is true. Or I've had many would not have been able to get it if yeah, we didn't that's just focus on that. They end up on the surface, right? If, if they're if they're the bottom, bottom, that's yeah, they end up on the surface, <laughs> and that can be dangerous because especially if you're in like a you know 15 foot pool or something. What we were talking nose. before, if they're holding their breath because nose. their mask is off and all, oh. then you are in a dangerous situation. And so I don't have a problem with the, the students struggling like so that. They can get their mask that's okay. Well, that then do the buoyancy and then have them do it. And right. if they can do it while they're neutrally buoyant, and they should be able to do it while they're neutrally buoyant. That looks good. By the that end. looks great. Yeah, by the end. Absolutely. That's where the a lot of instructors are dropping the ball, right. and that's what's triggering the people that are for it. Correct. I mean, maybe for the, Greg, I think, but I that's, that's reasonable. reasonable. And I've also yeah. noticed the majority I've seen, they're very good. They're tech divers. They usually do, like, uh, law enforcement or military or something like that. The majority, not all. Therein, I think, lies the little bit of difference because I've seen a lot of instructors for, like, fire departments and for police. You're training somebody that's typically a lot more confident than the people off the street that you do in a shop. We're right. doing kids that don't want to be there, but the dad's making them, and now we just got to deal with it. The yeah. spouse that's dragged in there that has no water comfort. So let's give him 40 pounds and plant them on the floor. It's that's dangerous. how we that's how we teach him. And you know it's dangerous because when you're the other thing we failed to say, I bet comments were are already coming in for this. When you are way overweighted, not the little bit to adjust for the tank comment that Gus is a hundred percent right on. Way overweighted. That's super dangerous because they may not be able to get to the surface if they need to. And I know they're supposed to practice ditching their weights, but if they're so overweighted, they're going to fly when they ditch those weights. You think a brand new student is going to remember that they was all they had to do was dump their air, lean back into emergency boy no. in the set and blow. They're going to dump those happen. weights and they had so much air in their BC. They're going to get an embolism. There's no benefit to overweighting them. No. There's just not whatsoever. Right. You're not going to get them neutral in the, yeah. at first. If, if yeah, someone you are. is you are. trained to be on the yes, you are. team, they want to be there and they're they're pumped to be there. They're typically physically fit or right. more fit. Yeah. And they're already at a certain age and a certain confidence and usually have already done some stuff already. Correct. That's well, the just kids are the best. difference I'm seeing that a lot of people. The kids in my tri scuba. They're like, can you stop talking? Because I'm underwater. I'm, I look I'm at him. I'm like, what are you doing? not the five or 10 minutes I said. They yeah. immediately go underwater in the tri scuba yeah. and they're neutral because they just are being natural. I'm struggling with this one. I mean, I'm, I don't, you and I, we're going to get killed. Well, I don't know about that. I think that, and, and we don't know what the comments are going to say below, but I feel like there will be a lot of instructors watching this that will agree with us. They will agree with the fact that you should teach people on the proper buoyancy and trim position, right? You should teach them that way. It's not because of the law of primacy and all these other stuff, all these other theories. It's because it's the right way to teach how to scuba. Because all the skills that you learn on the open water class, if you have to do them for real, you're hopefully in proper trim and buoyancy. Somebody kicks you in the mask, you have to clear it. You know, what, what, I, what I've seen in the past is people are swimming near the bottom. Something like that happens. They literally stop, go on their knees, and then they have to clear and do all this. Stuff. Like, it's the wrong way to do it. Like, I don't care how you justify it in, like, calculus and geometry. And you should probably learn to multiply. I don't care. There's no, there's no basis for this whole premise of learning in your knees. There's just none. No excuse. Into that. Right. 
Anyway, so what's your position in one sentence on you should teach everyone from the beginning from a neutrally buoyant position? In one sentence, I'd say that if you can do it, great, but there is absolutely nothing wrong with teaching someone on their knees as long as by the end of the class, you have them neutrally buoyant. Bingo. Totally agree. Couldn't have said it better myself. I know. Yeah, that was a good one. <laughs> All right. I mean, I will, I will, I will, I want to, that wasn't a terrible comment. At least, at least he acknowledged that by the end of the class, I am admitting that they need to be neutral. I would have liked to have heard him add the word trim. And I do think there are times where I have had to slow it down and maybe just calm somebody and even just a little fin tip breathing up and down movement sure. just to get the feel before those fin tips come off. Just that though. I'm not adding a million other skills, but then move on. Then let them swim around and practice that. What you just showed them. Yep. Don't add another skill. Let them get comfortable right away, right away. The first thing you should do is let them get comfortable being, you know, neutral and in trim. I don't know why you have to jump right to all these skills. Those don't take long to do once they have that. And you and I know that a lot of the whole trim and buoyancy thing comes down to the way the gear is set up too. Because we're not doing anything special with our bodies and like breathing out of our eyeballs so we can keep in trim when we're not moving, right? Because what happens to most people is you can be in trim while you're moving and as soon as you stop, you do this, which you saw Kenny do in the video when he's a Ginny. He starts swimming around. I think he blows a kiss or whatever. He looks like he's in good trim. And as soon as he stops, whoop, he just goes, you know, complete, uh, complete seahorse. So the challenge is how do you prevent that? right? How do you prevent that is working on your gear and your own trim and position, right? Arch your back. You need to arch your yes. back and make sure your feet are high. And if you still feel you're coming down, well, your weights are too low. Move them to your shoulders. We have, you know, move stuff to your shoulders. Yes. My, both my spirit and my sidewinder, both rebreathers have a weight on my shoulder to counter the weight of my oxygen tank that is below, right? Because I know if I don't have weight up on my shoulders, the tank is going to push my butt down. Unless I'm moving, I won't be able to be in trim. So you have to be maniacal about the way your gear is set up. It needs to matter to you. And if it matters to you as an instructor, it will matter to your students and they will reflect that. They will work on their gear. It will matter to them. But if you're out there looking like a whale that's sleeping, they'll be like, I can look like that too. I don't need to work hard. Notice I didn't have to pause or even say one word. I can't say it any better than what Gus just said. It's true. Yep. So instead of focusing on why you should teach in your knees and who's calling you lazy and all of that, let's just focus on getting better, teaching people the proper way to scuba from the beginning, not because that's the way they'll remember or the way, whatever is because it's the right way to do it. And, um, you know, just keep working on it. Definitely don't do it like the worst instructor we've ever seen. Ooh, no, don't do that. that Which was... is this guy. I'm going to leave right here on the screen. But remember that? <laughs> I don't even know how those people. I mean, that was just, if they ever wanted to dive again, do not. Do Definitely this. don't be that guy. Yeah. <laughs> that was horrible. Bye, everybody. We'll see you on the next one.